Hi everyone, Jo here from the online community team and thank you all for joining us, especially on this very hot day. <laughs> uh, as usual, we have James, the social media manager with us, working behind the scenes. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. So last week we were joined by First Intuition, who delivered you a session on PDSY, the professional synoptic assessment. As usual, you can watch any of our study sessions at facebook.com forward slash your AOT forward slash videos. Uh, we showed you a teaser clip in our intro from one of our podcasts available to you within the learning portal. These podcasts are fantastic to listen to when you're on the go or even at home when you want to sit back and relax whilst also getting some top notch advice for your studies. These are brand new and produced for you. If you want to find out how studying can be like a bite sized ironing, check out this podcast on your learning portal. If you missed whereabouts you can find these, just rewind back to the beginning of the stream. We are aware that a lot of you are eager to start booking your assessments um, with the 29th of June FASI approaching. Although we're allowing assessments to be sat from this date, it will be dependent on each assessment venue and training providers as to when they will have availabilities, as well as when they will be reopening. We understand that this can be frustrating for many of you as you're ready to go and get back to those exams. If you're looking for alternative venues, take a look on our website for our find an assessment venue search tool. You can access this with the link aat.org.uk forward slash assessment hyphen venues forward slash search. Uh, don't worry about taking note of that, we'll pop them into the comments box. Um, or you can also find this link within our dedicated COVID-19 updates page. We're trying to keep the search up to date as much as we can with consideration to the fastly changing climate we're currently in. We're also reliant on the details given to us from venues um, if any changes are made. So please take this into account if some venues on the list may not currently be offering assessment at the time that you'll contact them. So for today, we're going to be joined by Joanna Rogers, AAT tutor at iTech. Joanna will be going through a two part study session on variance analysis. Today's session, so part one, we'll be looking at an introduction to variances, including the calculation of variances. So variances are introduced in the management accounting costing on the advanced level and are also a very important and reoccurring part on the professional level. Uh, this appears in the budgeting, decision making, control and also in that professional synoptic assessment. So this will be applicable to many of you watching. OK, so let's bring Joanna into the session. Hi, Joanna. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> um, you've got a great session today that I think will really help a lot of our students. Uh, but before we kick into that, how have you been coping during lockdown? Uh, well, lockdown has been interesting. I mean, I've been teaching accounting for quite a few years now. And suddenly we were thrown into this <clears throat> online studying or I would say virtual studying and learning where I would say a class is everywhere you go, even in the garden, especially in the weather like we have today, when you can go and sit under your pergola and, and revise and study. So wherever you are, we can join the classes today. <laughs> Amazing. Um, can you give our viewers a quick rundown of iTech as well as what your role is, Joanna? <clears throat> yeah, of course. <clears throat> as I said, I've been teaching for quite a few years. I have over the, le the recent years, I've been focusing on teaching apprenticeship. iTech is a an independent um, apprenticeship provider. We deliver courses from level three up to four. We've got <clears throat> excellent students, very engaging. And uh, we obviously liaise with the employers as well. And that is a perfect opportunity, like we did see, see this in the video, which you've just shown, for anyone who doesn't want to go to university, who would like to study and learn at the same time. And uh, we offer that opportunity. So um, if, you've heard, if you haven't heard of iTech, here we are accepting all the students and um, um, providing really good service and really good teaching, I believe. Thank you, Joanna. Um, so Joanna's coming from a lot of experience, so we're very lucky to have her today. Um, so Joanna will now deliver her study support session 
As usual, any questions you have regarding this topic that you'd like Joanna to answer, please just pop these into the comments box. This is a perfect and rare time to get your answers, sorry, to get answers to your questions by an AOT expert. James will keep a record of any questions that come in and we'll try and get these answered at the end of the session. Right, so we'll hand over to you now, Joanna. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> and I'm going to start with this uh, um, very famous sentence which everyone is using. Oh, my screen now. I hope you're going to see it. It appears to be a little bit more complicated than I expected. I hope you all already. Yeah, we've got it. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, James. <clears throat> so as Joe has um, explained to you, we're going to talk about variances today. And variances are quite an important topic. They do appear in quite a lot of areas of AAT. Uh, it is something that a lot of students find a little bit challenging at times, so I hope I'm going to solve some of your problems and issue and clarify them for you. Obviously, looking forward to any questions you've got as well. Okay, we're going to go through, um, uh, we're going to walk from the beginning, so it's a journey from the beginning of variances. Uh, we're going to split the whole variances sessions into two, one being today, one being on Monday. So today I'm going to focus on just introduction of variances, a little bit of calculations, uh, making sure you understand how to calcul calculate the variances. So looking through direct cost variances, variable overhead variances, fixed overhead variances, and a little bit surprise at the end of backwards variances, which was by request. And we're starting with what is a variance, and I'm sure you all know this as we are preparing for the uh, year-end exams. <clears throat> you know that the variance is a difference between the actual and expected result. What's important here to remember is that it can be calculated only after flexing the budget to the level of actual results. Okay, What we're trying to achieve here is the like-for-like -like comparison. Okay. Now, <clears throat> without flexing the budget, calculating variances were totally pointless and it would not show um, any valid um, uh, result for the management. And we know that variances calculation are great management tools. <clears throat> so it helps us with the three elements of the managing uh, of the business. It helps us with the planning, helps us with the control, and it helps us with the decision making. All those three elements will rely on the variance calculation in a big part. <clears throat> I start with the classification. I'm not going to go into details because you probably know this already and you probably think, can we move on to something more interesting? So just a quick um, reminder that we split them into favorable and adverse. We split them into significant and non-significant and controllable and uncontrollable variances. And for the further and deeper understanding of those variances on a level four, we're going to be splitting them into price and usage for materials, rate and efficiency for labor, and expenditure and efficiency for variable overheads. <clears throat> now, splitting the variances will help us to understand them better and explain the reason for those variances. So again, a very important um, tool for the management here. I'm going over the same thing a little bit to, to make sure that you understand and you remember that the variances are comparison of the budgeted to the actual. So what we're actually comparing here, we compare the should to did. Okay, And I'm giving here an example of total material variance. As, as, as you remember, the variant material variance is going to be split into the usage and the price. <clears throat> And the total materials is going to tell us what actual units should cost and compare this to what they did actually cost. By splitting them into two further variances, we're going to see what the reason for those variances are. So is the reason the usage? Have we used more or less of the material? Or is the, the, the reason the price? Which means have we paid too much 
or have we paid a little bit less because we managed to secure some uh, bargain uh, purchases, okay? Whichever one we use, we still compare the should to did. So what it should be under the budget and what it did, what it happened in actual production. A bit more of a graphing representation of that to make sure it sticks a little bit in your head. And also I'm going to use those green and orange colors to make sure that you can um, distinguish them in the text. And without further ado, uh, I know my students love to calculate and they don't like when I talk too much. So I'm going to give you a question here. Um, we've got direct cost variance here <clears throat> and a little question, which is from the budgeting uh, exam from AET practice exam one, question six, very standard question on budgeting. <clears throat> And it says that the operating statement, operating statement for October showed that direct raw material costs were 142,560, 9,900 kilograms of material were used, and 6,000 items were made and sold. So what I've done for you is I have very quickly showed you which ones are the actual and which ones are budgeted cost. Now, you can probably agree with me that sometimes in the questions it's quite tricky and quite difficult to distinguish between those actual costs and the budgeted costs. There's quite a few figures and numbers that we see and it's really really crucial, really really important to distinguish between those. So we're going to look for the standard. A standard means it's a budget. Standard's going to be taken from the standard cost cut and that's going to be used to produce the budget. So the figures should be the same for both, will be the same for both. And the actual, which is results of what happened actually during the course of the business. Next thing we're going to focus is looking at how many actual units we produced here. Why is that important? Because knowing how many units we produced, what the actual level of activity is, we can now prepare the, the budget as well. Okay? The budget, remember the budget is the same as standard. So I would like you to use those, this question here and try to tell me what is the actual number of kilograms that we used in production and what's the actual price for those. I think James did promise he's going to help me with the answers which are going to be flying from the students. We hope. Yeah, that's right. So we, let's give them a little bit of time to get the calculators out and put the, the calculations together. So if people want to start putting in the comments uh, what you think the answer is, and we'll see if we can get a consensus from everybody on hopefully what the right one is. As we are starting on this, yeah, as we're starting on this very hot day, I have given you a little bit of a hint here. The standard is the green and the actual is the um, orange. So I hope that's going to be a good hint for you. Just give it a bit more time, not had any answers yet. Okay. <clears throat> so as you can see, I'm going to talk through a little bit waiting for the answers. We have, um, we have uh, underlined the fact that we've got 6,000 items, 6,000 units which are being produced. That's the 6,000, which is going to be applicable to both the actual and the standard. Any luck, James? Yeah, so we're getting some answers. So I'm getting um, uh, a price per kilogram and then a, just a, a weight in kilograms. What answer would you like? I would like the total kilograms and the total price that we've got. I would like the total for the actual, how much would it, how many kilograms did we use and what was the total price that we paid? Okay, let's see, right, so. It's a challenge. We've got an answer from Monica. Okay, hello Monica. She says 1.65 kilogram standard 
and uh, actual 9,900. Okay, very good. Let us review some of the answers. Very good. It's 9,900 kilograms. Very good. That's the actual result. And with the price total as underlined in orange as well, it's 142,560 pounds. Thank you, Monica. That was great. Okay. So now based on that, we're going to calculate the standard. In other words, what would the budget for the 6,000 6, items be? Monica has quite clearly understood that 1.6 kilograms here is your standard. So how many kilograms <clears throat> would we expect to use for the six items produced? Well, I'm going to take this 1.6 kilogram. My handwriting is not great on that, but I hope you can see it. And I'm going to times it by the 6,000 units which we are using. That's going to give us the number of kilograms and I'm going to times it further by the price, which is £14.50 to give us the total price. And again, over to you, James, if you've got any answers. Yep, just waiting for them to come in. Just because we're getting a bit of your screen clipped off on the left, so I can only see the uh, the times 6,000 and the times 1450. Um, okay. So it might be better just to, to write in the middle underneath. Um, no problem at all. Yeah, for the next one. I'm okay. Here. So it's 1.6. Is that better, James? Yes, that's better. <clears throat> 6,000 and then times 14 pounds 50. Okay, we've got some answers coming in. Uh, okay. And let's see, so I think it's Inus, that's how you pronounce it has said uh, 139,200. Okay. And let's review that, absolutely right. 139,200 pounds and 9,600 kilograms. So you can see we can now compare the standard to the actual. As you can see straight away, the standard cost was lower than the actual. So we will have a adverse variance here. And also at the usage kilograms, you can see that the standard says we should have used 9,600 and we used 9,900 kilogram. So we've got here the comparison of the shoot to the did. Shoot coming from the standard and did coming from the actual results. I'm going to take it to the new screen because I'm going to do some further calculations. Okay. And what I'm going to start from, I'm going to look at uh, the difference between the standard and the actual cost. Okay. So the difference between 139,200 and 142,560 will give you a total variance, total material variance. Okay. Because we're going to try to split those variances now into um, the price and the usage. Okay. So the total material variance, and we're going to look at the difference between the kilograms which we've used. We've used um, 9.9 and we should have used 9.6, so we will get the 300 difference. As we can see, the prediction of the first indication that the standard was much lower than the actual showed us the variance, the total material variance of 3,360 adverse. Okay. We have also discovered that we've got 300 kilograms difference. Okay, that's going to be used to calculate the usage. Now, a very quick question. Is this going to be, by your prediction, a favorable or adverse variance? Okay, let's give a, a few seconds for the stream to catch up. Um, yep, so if you could comment in the, in the comments if it's going to be a favorable or not still getting a few answers in from the previous question so there's a bit of a delay up between okay. between the stream but luckily everyone's getting them in and they're correct i strongly believe that um doing things is a better way of studying than actually just listening so i hope as many of you can get involved <clears throat> as you can so we Look forward to your hand, to your answers here. Okay, so, so Joe Murphy. Calculating the use. 
yeah. has said it is oh I've got Sophie sorry not Joe's adverse adverse very good and it is adverse because as you can see we have used more kilograms than the standard so if we've used more we're going to generate an adverse variance here and uh, without asking you now for the figure i'm going to calculate it to speed things a little bit up we're going to look at this three kilograms and we're going to start calculating the usage variance and we're going to take 300 kilograms which is the difference between the standard and the actual and times it by the standard cost per unit i've given those standards on top of the page for you all to refer to just in case you forgot that standard cost per kilogram was 14 pounds 50 so we're going to take 300 kilograms times it by 14 pounds 50 to give you adverse variance so yes this was absolutely correct now a challenge for you could you could you calculate the other variance which is outstanding which is the price variance and the price variance will show us whether we have paid more or less than for the materials than we budgeted than we planned than the standard so a challenge for everyone could you calculate the price variance please Yeah, the majority of people, uh, I think there were about 20 or 30 comments here saying adverse on the last question. So well done, everyone, for getting that right. Well done, very good. You've got excellent teachers <laughs> and you're excellent students. You've seen what you're doing, which is great. Exams are coming. Don't forget, everybody, if you have any questions, please put them into the comments and we'll, and we'll make sure we get those looked at at the end. So we've got some answers coming in. Okay. We have one from uh, Jamina, uh, 990 pounds favorable. 990 favorable, very good. Okay. So um, the way I calculated and the way my students remember better is to take this 9,900 kilograms, which we actually used, we time it by the 14 pounds 50 to give us the cost that we should have paid if we bought these uh, materials at the standard price and then we deduct the 142560 which is the price that we actually paid to give us the 990 favorable variance you can see that we should have paid more than we actually paid and therefore the variance is favorable and you can always do a little reconciliation if you take 4,350 adverse variants and add on to this the favorable variance of 990, that should reconcile to your total variance of materials. So it's a very quick and very nice way to reconcile to make sure you've actually calculated things correctly. So that's one way of um, looking at variance data. And this data was provided here using the standard costs. We were given from the beginning the standard cost per unit and the standard price per, per unit as well. Sometimes it might not be so straightforward. Like in this example, it's the same practice assessment, question six. Part C to that question, six, eight, eight marks for this, which is quite a good amount of marks you can get for that. We don't have standards here. What we've got, we've got level, we've got budgeted and actual results, and the activity data is given, given to us for those results. What you need to pay attention here to is that those budgets are not the same as the actual results. And we have to be very careful with this because do you remember at the very beginning, I did say we need to compare like for like so what we need to do we need to flex the budget to reflect the actual production so the actual production being 18,800 units we need to now show what the standard or a budget would be for this level of production so i've calculated that for you <clears throat> and we do it by flexing the budget if you can see, uh, if you can look at the workings, we've taken 3,660, we divided by the number of units in a budget, 18,300, and times it by 1880 
to give us the amount of hours that we would expect the labor to be for the 18,800 units produced. And then we timed it <clears throat> by the standard cost of 0.2 hours per unit, standard um, amount of hours per unit to give us the total cost as well. Okay, the workings are provided to you on the bottom. We've got, um, I've taken out from these calculations also on the side, the standard. So the amount of um, time that we take to uh, produce the unit and also the calculation of uh, the cost per labor hour. Remember, these are going to be standard costs and they are deducted from the budgeted costs. So as I like to get you involved, I'm going to ask you to split those. I've taken the cost from the previous slide. Um, so that you can see them quite clearly on the new slide. Do you remember that we talked about the standard costs um, of 0. Point, sorry, 0. 0.2 hours per unit and the cost of £18 per labour hour? I would like you to calculate both the efficiency and rate. Let's start with the efficiency, so there's no confusion. So could you please calculate the efficiency? Now, I've done some variances for you, so the efficiency, obviously, as, as you calculate, I'm going to be um, talking through it. The efficiency is going to be based on those labor hours here. There's a difference of 940 between the standard and the actual. As you can see, standard was lower, the actual hours were higher, and therefore we would expect an adverse variance here. So we're going to take the 940. I do miss my big whiteboard, 240, and we're going to times it by the standard cost, £18 per hour, and that's going to give you the efficiency variance, so calculate it and see if you get it right. And for the rate, we're going to do exactly the same way as we did previously for the materials. We're going to take the number of hours which we use, so 4,700 hours, we're going to times it by the standard cost, we're going to see what the cost should be if we paid for the labor at standard rate. And we're going to compare it to the actual rate of 82,720. And we're going to find out what the rate variance is. So as you can see, as you can have the answers um, coming in, I expect James already. Because we seem to have excellent students today. Only give us the right answers, which is really great. <laughs> Not quite There'll yet. Be a lot of passes there. Not quite yet. <laughs> um, but again, that's probably due to the slight delay between us asking the questions and Facebook setting out the stream. So I'm confident that these guys will get this right. That's okay. Yep, here we go. So we've got one from Cheryl. Okay. Who says uh, 16,920. Absolutely perfect. That's our efficiency variance. I would like to see if it's adverse or favorable. Did Cheryl write if it's adverse or favorable? She said adverse efficiency. Adverse. Very good. Adverse um, variance. And for the rate? I think we're still getting in the, uh, the efficiency right now. Um, okay. And we should get the rate hopefully through in a second. Okay, so Elaine Allman. I hope said, they're okay. Um, 1880. 1880, and is that favourable adverse? Uh, is it both adverse? Both, both adverse, yeah. okay. Is everyone agreeing with that? Oh, so Jemina has okay. said 1880, but it's gone for favourable, and so has uh, okay. Tommy. And Jamina and Tommy were absolutely right. This is 1880 favorable. <clears throat> so we've got both efficiency and rate variance here. Remember about reconciliation. Remember that these figures added together should get back to the total variance. So this variance here is a combination of your rate and efficiency. So 15,040 is a combination of those two variances. And make sure that in the exam you reconcile them. So make sure you got your question right. Okay. 
Well done. So we've kind of a very quick journey through the variances, direct variances. That's obviously not the end of our journey. We still have our fixed overhead variances as well. And I think these are creating a little bit more problems. Now, as you remember, uh, fixed overhead variances under absorption costing will be all absorbed into the cost of the unit. And we're going to do it by calculating something which is called overhead absorption rate. I've just lost my mouse. Here we go. Overhead absorption rate. And the overhead absorption rate is calculated by taking the total budgeted cost and dividing it by total either units or more likely material, sorry, labor hours or machine hours. So that's calculating overhead absorption rate. And this overhead absorption rate will be used to, uh, uh, to uh, with actual production units to calculate either the over or under absorption. And this over and under absorption is basically your fixed overhead variance. Now, if you remember that overhead absorption rate is calculated at the beginning of the year, there's a lot of things that can happen in a year. So very often those results at the end of the year will not be very, it won't be similar, won't be exactly the same as at the beginning. There will always be a difference. Either the, the overheads themselves will be different or the units that we produce will be different. So this overhead absorption rate will be incurred because of those two elements. So it's going to be either because of the expenditure or because of the volume. The expenditure means we have spent more or less on, ex on the overheads than we planned. The volume means that we spent, we produced either more or fewer units in a year. But again, you see what we do. We still compare the budgeted cost to the actual cost. So we still compare our shoot to did. But with the fixed overhead variances, we're also going to look the overhead absorption rate and that overhead absorption rate will be quite important. And remember, that's calculated at the beginning of the year using the total fixed overheads and apportioning it to the produced units on relevant basis, so either unit or machine or labor hour basis. <clears throat> we just can't see the bottom right-hand corner. It's just clipped off slightly on that previous slide, Joe, and that's just to be clear for everyone. Could you just... Jump yeah, back a budgeted slide. units. If this is the one, budgeted units plus actual units times overhead absorption rate. That's going to be the calculation. Yeah, so we're going to look at budgeted units, less actual units. We're going to times it by overhead absorption rate. Okay, that's going to give you a volume variance. And for the expenditure variance, we're going to look at budgeted cost. Let less actual cost of ex of uh, fixed overheads. So again, we compare should. To the did so that's a very quick calculation so bearing in mind a task for you because i think i talked again a little bit too much i'm going to ask you to calculate those fixed overheads and we're going to start i hope you can see the screen <laughs> i've got a little question here abc limited manufactures a product one product a and budgeted to make 1100 units during the next quarter the standard cost card for one unit of A states that the product's overheads will be absorbed at the rate of two hours per unit and the overhead absorption rate will be six pounds per unit. And we've got details of actual production. The actual production was 105 hour, 1050 units, so slightly lower than we predicted and expected and the overheads incurred was 7,200 pounds. So we're going to start by comparing the fixed overheads, uh, calculating fixed overhead variance. Okay. And as you remember, that was the, the difference between the overheads absorbed and the overheads incurred. So what we're doing really here is calculated whether we had an overhead absorption, sorry, whether we have um, uh, over or under absorbed. So, as you're working it out and getting your figures to James, do you remember that overhead absorption will be calculated based on the units which we have actually uh, produced? We produced 105 units here, that's your actual production. 
And for each of those units, we needed to absorb the overheads and the overhead absorption rate was six pounds per unit. So I'm gonna times it by six to give us 6,300 by six. Doesn't look very much like six, probably better this one. Okay, and we're gonna compare that to overheads incurred. Now those incurred overheads are actual overheads. So we can compa compare that to the actual overheads of 7,200 and the difference will show us whether we have over or under absorbed. And the difference here is 900. I hope, James, you've got those figures. I'm only asking if it's going to be over or under absorbed, if it's going to be adverse or favourable. Right, so yeah, we've got answers coming in now. So we've got uh, Cheryl, who says 900 okay. under absorption. Okay. If it's under absorption, it's going to produce an adverse variance. Thank you very much, Cheryl. That's great. Okay. So that's one down. Two to go. I've actually uh, have the one that I made earlier. So once we move on to the previous ones, you've got the working on the top as well. If my handwriting is not that great. The fixed overhead expenditure variance. What we're going to compare here. We're going to look at budgeted fixed overhead expenditure. So the budgeted is not given to us as a total, but if we know the budgeted that the overhead absorption rate was six pounds per unit and we produced 1,100 units, we can from that calculate the budgeted fixed overheads, which are 6,600. Okay. <clears throat> With an expenditure variance, we're just going to compare this to the actual overheads now. And actual overheads are given to you. I keep losing my pen. The actual overheads are given to us here. They were 7,200. And the difference we can see that the difference is 600. And again, all I'm asking for, is it adverse or favorable? Jeff was ahead of us there and he did the calculation and he's gone okay. for 600 pounds adverse. And that's an absolutely perfect answer. And again, I've got the one that I made earlier. This is 600 adverse, absolutely perfect. It's adverse because you can see that what we budgeted was much lower than we actually had to spend. So therefore, we're going to have to look for those 600 pounds missing to pay for our overheads. Very good. And the last one, <clears throat> brilliant students today. We're going to calculate the fixed overhead volume variance. Now, the volume is going to relate to the number of units. So we're going to look for actual level of production, actual number of units which we produce, and the budgeted. And, and we've got here the actual number of units. I think you probably remember them by now. And this is the budgeted. So we've got a difference of 50 units. So we planned to produce 1,100. We produced 1,050. That's the difference of 50 units. And we're going to apply overhead absorption rate for that. And that's going to create and calculate our fixed overhead volume variance. And I'm going to look for the numbers and the indication whether it's adverse or favorable, please. waiting for these to come in so we've got a question from Jeff he's asking if it's two hours per unit so and six pounds per hour then surely it is 12 pounds per unit absorbed not the six pounds being used no this is six the overhead absorption is six pounds per unit and each unit takes two hours which means that overhead absorption rate if you want to recalculate it based on hours is going to be three pounds per hour and that gives us six pounds per unit 
it's those little nuances when you look at the exam questions which are very important it's very very easy to um to overread or overthink sometimes as well yeah Je jeff actually commented he takes that back before but we put it up before you got a chance to to get it out there so no problem jeff no problem <laughs> it is a valid question, actually, and it is it it is very important to actually look at those look at those things because it's very very easy to just look at two and six and add them together and think that's going to be twelve. Um, it is six pounds per unit, but it's a it's a good way to uh, it's it's good that you pointed it out, Jeff. Thank you. <clears throat> so just a very quickly, I'm still looking for fixed overhead volume variance here. We've got Monica with um. 300 yes. favorable and that seems to be uh different to some other question others who have gone for like leslie okay. who says 300 adverse okay it is 300 but it's 300 adverse the adverse comes from the fact that we have produced fewer units so if you use the overhead absorption rate and you haven't produced the full amount of units that you budgeted you're going to be missing that's 50 units of overhead absorption rate okay so if you produce fewer units than you planned in a budget, the overhead absorption rate will be adverse. We're just okay, missing the so bottom of your screen one. there. So okay. the, the, the final have, line. Um, it says fixed overhead volume variance and it's 300 adverse. Perfect, thank you. And I'm very aware of the fact that it is supposed to be bite size, and uh, I hope uh, you can still hold on with me for a little bit. Um, we've looked at the fixed overhead variances for absorption costing. For marginal costing, we will not have the volume um, variance. We won't have the volume because under marginal costing, the fixed overheads are taken away from the calculation in production. And therefore, we will only look at the expenditure. So we're going to look at the difference of cost of actual and incurred overheads only. So you need to look when you've got an exam question, whether they use the marginal or absorption costing in calculating um, when we calculate the variances. So when you've got a marginal costing, where you've got a fixed overhead variance for the volume, you're going to put zero. But I'm going to talk about those a little bit more uh, on Monday because we're going to look at various exam questions and see how we interpret variance and how we um, do calculations and put the calculations in the questions. Okay. So um, last thing I would like you to look at, there was a request. Um, Someone wanted me to uh, to go over the backward, backwards variances. Um, they are a bit more tricky. This is where we don't get all the information. It's a bit like uh, miss, some information is missing. And we start from the end. We've got the variances given. We've very often got the totals um, given. And that could be either actual or the budgeted costs. And we need to go back and produce the standard cost here. Okay, so um, I'm going to run through that and I hope you can follow me up. Okay, we still start from the fact that we, we, we're going to start from, from those, this data which is given to us. If we know what the actual materials cost, which here is the cost of 36,400, which is this cost here, and we know that the variance is 1,400 adverse, what that means is that we spend more than we planned, okay? And the planned comes under the should. Do you remember we always talk about should and did? Should is the budget. So the budget should have been £35,000, okay? And we know this because the actual materials were 1400 higher than the standard. Now, once we know that, <clears throat> We can take that, take that standard, that budgeted cost here, 35,000. We're going to divide it by the 14,000 kilograms, which is your actual material used, to give you standard cost per kilogram. Okay. So we're doing it from, from the end of your variances. Okay. We can then use the last remaining variance which is given, direct material usage variance, and say 
if that was adverse, we've got £2,500 adverse. If we divide it by the standard cost, excuse me, that's uh, not quite so easy sometimes. Okay, we're, gonna, we're going to see that it's a thousand kilograms difference. It's adverse because the variance was adverse. And what that means is that, and you probably still don't see the bottom of the screen. So if your actual, I'm going to write it on here, if the actual materials were 14,000 kilograms and we had a variance of 1,000, which was adverse, okay, means we, we used 1,000 kilograms more than we planned. So therefore the plan, the budget, the standard should have been 13,000 kilograms. So it's all here about looking at balancing figures and trying to deduct what the costs, as I said, we started here with actual, that could, could e quite, quite easily be the budgeted costs which are given and you need to calculate your actual by giving the, by showing the, uh, recalculating with the variances um, to get your backwards variances right. So uh, that's the end of our little journey on variances today. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it, it clarified certain things for you. Um, if there are any questions, James? Uh, we had one question earlier on. So yeah, if anyone has any questions now, please do write them in the comments below. Um, this is your chance to get uh, some of Joanna's additional time. Um, if, we, if I just find this question earlier. So this was... Um, quite early into the presentation about uh, when we were working okay. out the um, I think it was the hours um, it says can you write 0 0.19 hours or do we have to round up to 0 0.2 hours um, depending on the requirement on the exam typically I would say do not round anything until the very end so if you do a calculation Calculate the total by the number of hours and then don't round it until you times it further on. So use always the last figure and then follow the instruction about the last figures um, rounding. So whether it's one, two decimal places or whether you need to round it to the, to the pound. No questions yet, Monica says thank you. And uh, Dawn says thank you, a good refresher. Uh, for her okay, thank you very much. and Jemina is also thanking you um, so it's always a good sign of a of a good session if there's no questions at the end it generally means that everyone has fully understood it thank so big high everyone five to everyone <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much just we'll, to we'll, remind we'll, quickly that that uh, that we will I will be doing the second part as I said I'm going to focus on the written questions in level four exams so we're going to look how to analyze those variances and, and help you guys to write a good uh, report on a level four exam. Hopefully you can get loads of questions, uh, loads of marks on that. So we're going to analyze variances and I'm going to help you with a little bit of written questions. If in the meantime you've got any further questions on variances, please forward them to AAT. They will let me know and I'll be very happy to include them in my presentation on Monday. Perfect. Thank you very much. Right, let's bring Joe back in. Brilliant. Thanks, Joanna, for joining us today. That was a great interactive session. If you'd like a copy of Joanna's slides, we have put the link into the comments box so you can access those. Um, apologies if part of the text was missed out slightly, um, but if you download those slides, you'll be able to see all the information on there. Um, like Joanna said, uh, we've got part two, which is coming on Monday. Uh, this will be again at two o'clock and Joanna will be diving into the analysis of variances. If you want to watch this video again or any of our other study support videos, head over to facebook.com forward slash your AOT forward slash videos. OK, that's all from us today. Keep your eyes out for our next study session after Joanna's um, and go and enjoy that hot weather. Bye, guys. <laughs>